which is those who've created the problem, glean that public reaction with a false story to then openly offer the solutions to the problems they have themselves created. The idea of using tragedy, manufactured or simply utilized, was deeply significant in my finally understanding how far these people will go to achieve their goals. It's a documented fact that we entered the Vietnam War under false pretenses. Former Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara has acknowledged that the attack on a ship in the Gulf of Tonkin didn't actually take place. Our judgment that we've been attacked that day was wrong. It didn't happen. More recently, former President Bush used non-existent weapons of mass destruction as a pretext for invading Iraq. Tactics like this are sometimes referred to as false flag operations. An increasing number of people believe that 9-11 was a false flag operation by the global elite in order to set the stage for taking over Middle East oil and dismantling U.S. constitutional protections. There are lives in the valley. There are people under fire. There are children at the cannon. There is blood on the wire. There is blood on the wire. There is blood on the wire. There is. Most of what's needed for a police state is actually already in place. Right now in America, any of us can be imprisoned without warning or due cause, and we can be kidnapped, tortured, and assassinated legally if the government decides what we are doing is a threat to their plan. All they have to do is name us as a suspect in their so-called war on terror. We're being watched more and more. In 2010, there were 30 million surveillance cameras recording us in the U.S. alone. When we demonstrate, we're now relegated to what are euphemistically called free speech zones. Zones for free speech? Every phone call and email we send is collected and archived and can be inspected at any time. Our driver's licenses and passports have computer chips implanted in them to track our every move. And now hospital patients are getting these same chips implanted under their skin. In fact, it was Procter & Gamble who developed these chips, initially for tracking their products. It's always offered as a way to help, but even an assistant director of Central Intelligence has admitted it's an entry point to getting all of us chipped for better tracking and control. These would-be controllers, through the U.S. Space Command, have outlined a plan called Full Spectrum Dominance sophisticated satellite surveillance as well as directed energy and laser weapons which are already developed have the ability to target dissenters anywhere on earth i believe they are also trying to ensure they can deal effectively with any resistance fema containment camps and railroad cars with shackles have been recently constructed or refurbished all over the united states for use in what officials call times of pandemic or civil unrest. There's one more brutal realization about the global domination agenda that I need to share. This was a horrible one for me to grasp. But without it, this inquiry would be dangerously incomplete and our solution strategies would be inadequately informed. In my research, I came across convincing evidence that their plan actually includes the elimination of the majority of the world's population. As sick as it sounds, it makes sense that they would be better positioned to succeed in their quest for absolute control if there are fewer of us to manage. Every time I thought they wouldn't do that, I discovered I was wrong. I found startling documentation that eugenics is one of the core pillars of their plan. Eugenics is the practice where some people get to decide who's worthy to breed and who's not. Sterilization is one of the many insidious ways this covert plan is being implemented. 
In 1904, the Carnegies funded the first eugenics laboratory in Cold Spring Harbor, Long Island. The Rockefellers funded involuntary sterilization of people of color through their eugenics programs and funded the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Germany to further the racial supremacy agenda later adopted by Hitler. In 2007, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Homeland Security funded a proposed project to aerial spray over 7 million people in urban areas of Northern California. After citizens organized against the plan, officials were forced to reveal that the spray included multiple toxins that can cause disease and disrupt the reproductive cycle. Fortunately, civil resistance stopped the project. The U.S. government has been caught over 30 times covertly experimenting with toxic chemicals on its own citizens, from soldiers, prisoners, and Native American reservations to entire towns and counties. Mass covert sterilization of women and girls, usually using secret additives to vaccines, has been exposed in Brazil, Puerto Rico, Nicaragua, Mexico, and the Philippines. These have been under the auspices of such programs as John D. Rockefeller's Population Council, the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, where Nelson Rockefeller was undersecretary, and the Rockefeller-founded World Health Organization. Novartis and Syngenta, in cooperation with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Department of Defense, have field-tested a spermicidal strain of GMO corn that would render male consumers infertile. This was quietly announced as a contribution to the world overpopulation problem. The list goes on and on. Right now, global human fertility is plunging. I'm convinced that this is no accident. For me, being willing to consider and research a direct depopulation agenda was critical to my getting the whole picture and to generating responses that could be sufficient to the task we face. I know this may sound crazy, but imagine that it's 1932 and we're in Germany. If I told you that in the next decade millions of people would be exterminated, you would say impossible. No one would do such a thing. This is what depopulation looks like today. I'm convinced that I'm not overstating the case. Could I be wrong? Perhaps. But what if I'm not? We are at a critical fork in the road in human evolution. One road is leading toward tyranny and possible self-destruction. The other would lead us to a peaceful, healthy civilization based on honoring the rights and freedom of every single person on the planet. To set off in this new direction, it's up to you and me to clear that road. The time has come to say, enough. There is another way. I believe that together we have the knowledge the resources and the solutions to meet that challenge. I see this process as nothing less than a struggle for the soul of humanity. It begins with a shift in worldview, answering the question, who are we really? What is human nature? Are we humans what the elite would have us believe? Stupid, greedy creatures who, if left to our own devices, would devolve into violence and chaos, and so for our own good must be ruled over by a self-appointed elite? Or are we naturally caring and creative? I believe when people are healthy and have what we need to survive, we can create a world based on integrity, freedom, and compassion. A world where everyone can thrive. Which of these two views will shape our future? That's our choice.